A person may cause evil to others not only by his actions but by his inaction, and in either case he is justly accountable to them for the injury. The most cogent reason for restricting the interference of government is the great evil of adding unnecessarily to its power. Originality is the one thing which unoriginal minds cannot feel the use of. If all mankind minus one were of one opinion, mankind would be no more justified in silencing that one person than he, if he had the power, would be justified in silencing mankind. I have learned to seek my happiness by limiting my desires, rather than in attempting to satisfy them. The only purpose for which power can be rightfully exercised over any member of a civilized community, against his will, is to prevent harm to others. His own good, either physical or moral, is not sufficient warrant. I am not aware that any community has a right to force another to be civilized. The disease which inflicts bureaucracy and what they usually die from is routine. In all intellectual debates, both sides tend to be correct in what they affirm, and wrong in what they deny. It is questionable if all the mechanical inventions yet made have lightened the day's toil of any human being. We can never be sure that the opinion we are endeavoring to stifle is a false opinion, and even if we were sure, stifling it would be an evil still. The duty of man is the same in respect to his own nature as in respect to the nature of all other things, namely not to follow it but to amend it. All good things which exist are the fruits of originality. All desirable things, are desirable either for the pleasure inherent in themselves, or as a means to the promotion of pleasure and the prevention of pain. Actions are right in proportion as they tend to promote happiness, wrong as they tend to produce the reverse of happiness. By happiness is intended pleasure and the absence of pain. Unquestionably, it is possible to do without happiness. It is done involuntarily by 1920ths of mankind. The liberty of the individual must be thus far limited, he must not make himself a nuisance to other people. All action is for the sake of some end, and rules of action, it seems natural to suppose, must take their whole character and color from the end to which they are subservient. Eccentricity has always abounded when and where strength of character had abounded, and the amount of eccentricity in a society has generally been proportional to the amount of genius, mental vigor, and courage which it contained. As long as justice and injustice have not terminated their ever-renewing fight for ascendancy in the affairs of mankind, human beings must be willing, when need is, to do battle for the one against the other.